Forget gurus. Forget anyone claiming to be an online business expert without going through the challenges of entrepreneurship themselves. The Real Money, Real Business podcast is here to prove the best insights in online business comes from your fellow online business builders. We dig into stories of entrepreneurs selling their business on the Empire Flippers marketplace so that you can learn how they made their business profitable, how they overcame obstacles, and what lessons they learned in their online journey. If you want to take your business and your knowledge to the next level, you've come to the right podcast. Let's get started. Hello, everyone. Craig here with another great business to discuss on this episode of the Real Money, Real Business podcast. Today's guest is Timothy, and he's selling his Amazon FBA and e-commerce business on the Empire Flippers Marketplace. So welcome to the show, Timothy, and how are you doing today? I'm great. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's great to have you on, and I'm looking forward to talking more about your business. But before we dive in, let's go over a brief summary of the business. It's an Amazon FBA and e-commerce business in the beauty niche, created in October 2010. The average monthly revenue for the business is $141,637, and it makes an average of $45,362 net profit each month. For everyone listening, you can visit empireflippers.com forward slash marketplace and search for listing 49133 to learn more about the business, or you can unlock this listing to start your due diligence if you're interested in purchasing this asset. So now that I've given a general overview of the business, let's have a look at what's included in the sale. So we have two e-commerce site domains, nine additional domains, seller central account with 40 SKUs, an email list with 15,000 plus subscribers, employee contract, two trademarks, all social media accounts for YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest. And it's important to note that inventory is not normally included in the list price, but further details can be provided to active buyers. Okay, Timothy, now let's hear from you. Can you tell us a little about your background in building and running online businesses? Certainly. My background goes back to late 2001 when I started in internet marketing and exclusively at that point SEO. From there, I did a lot of agency work with clients driving traffic to their site, doing paid advertisements, etc. and really got my feet wet and gained a mastery of those skill sets and eventually moved into affiliate marketing and e-commerce. E-commerce is kind of what we landed on today with this business listing. And through e-commerce, the evolution of that, I guess, in the early 2010s, led to a big surge in Amazon. And every year, I think it's grown on Amazon. So what we have today here is an e-commerce business in the beauty space with a lot of strong branding, a lot of unique products that are differentiators and then sort of disruptors in the industry that just have a lot of different things that address pain points with men and women who are trying to look their best through beauty products. Okay, that's a great story. So how come you made the shift from affiliate marketing to e-commerce? Good question. And basically, that was the product of doing a lot of testing. I was a very successful affiliate in the health space, in general, really skincare and anti-aging products. Back in about 2008, I was doing a lot of testing with some blogs. I happened to be very fortunate with my SEO back then and was number one in Google under best wrinkle cream, best eye cream, best anti-aging cream, a lot of different keywords like that. And I was making affiliate commissions with a couple different brands and doing very, very well, kind of with a hands-off, passive approach. And I just saw more out there for myself. And I really dug in, got into the private label space, got into the custom formulation space and and really immersed myself with that, talking to plastic surgeons, dermatologists and people that were in the know in that space and figured out what ingredients worked, what didn't work, what the marketing points were, what people really wanted to cure. And in that business at the time, it was really wrinkles, eye bags, puffiness, dark under eye circles. And Basically, just took the step from being an affiliate to having my own brand and ended up expanding that into you know, the product offers that you see today and the many products that are out there. And there's different brands under the main brand that are out there for sale. So, you know, I guess I just really saw success with the traffic and I saw conversions and just being an entrepreneur at heart, it really wanted me to have my own skin in the game, uh, pun intended, I guess, and create my own entity out there that had some intellectual property and value. Okay, yeah, that's a great answer. So you mentioned there's multiple brands included in the sale. Could you just tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. So there's a main brand that's the corporate umbrella that holds everything, and there are a bunch of products named under that range. There were different brands made over time basically to hit different price points, different kind of packaging looks and feels, and there's one that's a little bit more edgy that's a women's line 
So there's a lot of different things there that I kind of broke off and separated into different ranges and tried to grow them. And also on Amazon, that allows you to use different packaging and attack different kind of keywords for the same kind of product. There's some products out there with either very similar or identical formulas. So that being said, you can take different brands and that way you kind of avoid the cannibalization of your own products and you can kind of test and see which one works and then focus on the one that works. But I guess with the kind of ease to get into entry in the beauty niche and the great ability to scale, it kind of made sense to test different packaging, different looks and feels, kind of gear some towards men, some towards women. And so for me, differentiating the different brands seemed to be the play that I wanted to choose to go with for that for that strategy. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Obviously, this is Amazon FBA and in e-commerce. Could you tell us a little bit about how they work together for this business? Certainly. The e-commerce does a lot more to focus on the global sales. Being that all the marketing is in English, we do a lot of sales to countries where English is the first language. Australia, Singapore, obviously Canada and the UK come into play. And there are strong sales over there from the e-commerce platform. It also gives us a lot more control to do custom orders or combinations. And it does allow us to use the reach of the website and social media to an extent to reach people that wouldn't otherwise find us perhaps on Amazon. And there are very few people who don't use Amazon, but there are those sort of people that you know aren't a fan of Amazon for whatever reason, or maybe they were banned or something like that. But there are people that won't shop on Amazon as a first choice. And it's not very many people, but I figured we would cast a wide net out there. And again, backing up a little bit, the business was always an e-commerce business before the evolution of Amazon. This goes back 11 plus years and it started as an e-commerce business. And the first few years was exclusively in that realm. And the Amazon's kind of grown every single year with just more people on it. And then myself and the company taking a, a focus to really focus on Amazon. And it's been a huge driver. Okay. And you mentioned outreach for the e-commerce business. What sort of marketing did you do for the e-commerce business? The e-commerce does a lot of paid advertisements. Over the years, I've done a lot of giveaways and promotions. Pretty much anyone who would be someone who would have a voice that would leave a review on a website of theirs and something that would stick on Google. I've always been a fan of that. I have no problem sending free products to people in exchange for an honest review. To me, being out there and being found in search engines when someone types in your product name and having all that social proof really goes a long way. So that was done quite a bit over the years, more so in, in years past. Also, YouTube is a big driver as well. It's something that I wish I would focus more on and it's something that I like because people like to watch tutorials and see people demonstrate with the product in their actual hand and see what it looks like and hear their voice about it rather than a written review, which could be someone hiding behind something at times would be a little questionable. There's obviously a little bit of search engine traffic going to the site. The site and the platform you see right now was put online in May of this year. There was a whole rebrand kind of collaboration with all the brands going under one umbrella during COVID that opened up time to do that. So the SEO is gaining traction every single day and there are people that you know find it that way. And also email marketing comes into play a lot with the list that's just been built over the years. Okay, right. Quite a few things like to dig into there. Uh, mentioned two e-commerce site domains. So does that mean you have two e-commerce stores essentially and then other additional domains that do they redirect to the stores or how do those domains work? So there are some domains out there that were landing pages that were kind of selling one product, the old classic way where it would you know, you get to the top of the site and it's kind of a funnel that drags you down the whole site and tries to sell you the whole way. So those do occasionally do sales and they're also out there in the search engines doing, you know, reputation management. But basically, since the main store was set up with every product underneath it, those are kind of ancillary sites with the main store being the main focus and having an all encompassing site that captures and carries every single product out there. So while those sites are online and obviously included, they're not used as much. It could be something where in the future, if someone really wants to take one product and take those landing pages and perhaps update them and make them a lot more powerful, that they, they were in the past marketed. In fact, one of them it by itself did over $3 million back in 13 as a rebuild product. So there's definitely a lot of value, a lot of work that went into those sites as well. Wow, excellent. Yeah, that's great stuff for a buyer to know. And you mentioned the email list. Have you been marketing to that email list? Have you been monetizing that? Absolutely. It actually did very well just this past week with Black Friday and Cyber Monday. That's always a great time of the year. And people that, you know, seem to have not bought in a while seem to come out with the big sale we do. So that's something that's got a lot of value as well. 
Absolutely. And I'd like to understand the growth of the e-commerce side of the business compared to the Amazon side. What does that look? Is one side growing faster or are they sort of growing steadily together? I would say they grow steadily together. Again, the e-commerce platform and the current light that you see it right now wasn't put online until May of this year. And then obviously there was some paid traffic going and SEO is an ongoing game. But the Amazon growth is just something that with COVID, I guess, is growing a little bit faster than the e-commerce is. E-commerce is more of a long-term play and it's something that could be really amplified with paid traffic, which isn't my forte, but it's something we've dabbled at for 2020 and even in years past. But I think it's, it's unfair to say that anything can keep up with Amazon right now, especially given the climate with uh, you know the global pandemic that we're in. Absolutely. Yeah, I would agree with that 100%. So, I mean, it sounds like you build up a pretty solid business here. So the natural question is, how come you're selling the business at this point? So I have an opportunity with a company that I have invested in from the startup phase, and it's growing to the point where I will have an active role at the company, and it's something I'm very excited about. It's in an entirely different space that has to do with pets. So that's something that's on my radar, and it's just something that I really want to do because the founder of the company is a mentor to me, and learning directly from him just kind of seems like a logical next level to get you know, a company to a crazy number. I mean, you know, well past an eight figure multiple. So that's been a big desire of mine. And I was actually asked to be part of it a couple of years ago when it was a concept. But, you know, having this business right here was something I wanted to see to the finish line, being that going in the 11th year of business with it. So that is something I want to make a nice closure on and put a stamp on it, give it to someone else and let them take it to the proverbial next level so I can learn from someone else to, you know, hopefully do that with another business in the future. Absolutely. Exciting stuff. So how would you suggest someone takes this business to the next level? Sure. The first most logical step for me would be to expand the product line. In this space, there are a lot of different subsectors that could be amplified. And with a lot of research and putting time into those, I'm probably hitting two sectors and a few kind of small niche drivers to generate the revenue I am today. But there are certainly a lot more options out there as far as really drilling down niches and perhaps hitting a different side of demographics is probably the best way to say it. So there's a lot to do with that. And I would also look at maybe making some packaging upgrades and doing a luxury line. To me, that seems like a really logical next step, dressing things up. And instead of being kind of a consumer friendly price point on every product, perhaps making a line that's a little bit more elite and luxurious. So you could really hit different ones and really think of that really high end packaging look. That's something that My focus has kind of been on the last couple of years with recent product launches, but I think that's something that can really be driven further. Absolutely. And was anything that you tried that didn't work for this business? Yeah, I think that you learn a lot of the time in the years, basically, when you're trying to chase different trends and keywords. It can work for some brands because they have a lot of reach when you try to chase different formulations or ingredients that might be in a product. And just because someone's doing it doesn't mean you're going to be successful with it. You know, playing the copycat game is something that can be profitable, but nine times out of 10, there's people that are leaders and disruptors in that space. And the kind of people that are doing the me too thing doesn't always work out. So I think that the biggest thing I learned from this business was try to use my own ideas and my own creativity and my own research to be someone that innovates and leads, even if it's not a popular opinion, rather than globbing on and kind of taking a trend and trying to ride the coattails of other marketing out there. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. That's a very fair point. You also hire some workers to help you run this business. What kind of work do they do? So there's one full-time person who is basically a general manager to the brand, everything from logistics to supply chain to inventory management and customer service is handled by him. That is a very key cog in the business. And then everything else that's done is contract manufacturing. So there aren't any other people that are you know, full-time involved in the business. Um, I'm very skilled as far as internet marketing and getting things done with the sites and the Amazon. And I guess lastly, there is an agency that manages the entire Amazon account from soup to nuts, from handling health issues and account issues, all the way to suggesting inventory amounts and works hand in hand with my GM. And most importantly, the all important Amazon advertising, they handle everything. So that really makes my involvement limited to managing the overall business and the operations paying the bills and checking stats. So it's kind of hands off at this point with the team I have in mind. But certainly if someone wants to grow the business, I really suggest and urge them to be creative and be more hands on than I am right now if they're looking for growth. Okay. And those employees are happy to continue with the business after the sale? Yes. 
Excellent. So what skills or requirements do you think there are for someone who isn't familiar with this niche or type of business model? Well, you definitely have to be organized. I think for me, the best asset that I have as far as a skill set, I guess, with this business is being organized. And that's forecasting inventory. It's making sure all the team members know what to push. I mean, you can say, hey, advertise these products. But if you've got certain products that have a higher profit margin than others, it's important to know what you can and can't spend on those products. It's important to know the inventory constraints and some products in this business have certain restrictions as far as hazmat and storage limitations with Amazon. So there's a lot of different things that have to be kept in mind. And you have to be, again, going back to organization, you have to be really upfront with people about certain things and inventory and where they should push products and focus rather than you know, focusing on some products. Some products look really nice, but they're low sellers just because of the demand out there. For example, you know, I would say there's a lot more people in the world that eat pizza or hamburgers rather than people that eat, you know, a certain health food or, or, you know, supplement that you were to sprinkle on granola. And that's just the way it is. I'm nothing against people that are healthier, but you have to go for the masses instead of looking at a tiny little niche inside the business and make sure you get your wins there because the niche products all add up to the bottom line, but the focus should always be on the bigger products. So organizational skills would be number one. Number two, some sort of management skills and knowing how to manage the couple people that do run this. Again, the Amazon agency is amazing. They actually manage me, I think, a little bit to an extent because they're so good at what they do. So that's a big tip of the cap to them. And then again, just lastly, I think a little bit of creativity is good and being able to do research and development, which basically means keeping your eyes open and your ears to the ground in the industry and knowing what's out there, who you're playing against, and what's kind of coming down the pipeline and what you could do, counteract that and make sure you're always in the market with a product that's going to compete with that and be on the same level. Absolutely. Yeah, that's some great insights there. So with this business, what do you think are the biggest risks that a buyer should be aware of? Well, anytime you're dealing with Amazon, you're selling on someone else's platform. So that's always been something that if you aren't comfortable with the control, with giving up a little bit of control, it's probably not for you. Amazon, as many people know, can be quirky. There can be hiccups and issues from time to time. But largely when Amazon is humming along, it's your best ally out there. So that would be number one. Number two you really have to keep your eyes on stock. I mean, when you run out of inventory and stuff like that, that can be a very detrimental thing to the business. So I don't think it's a huge thing to worry about as long as you're organized. But for the people that, you know, it is largely an autopilot business with minimal involvement, but you can't just check out for a couple months and expect everything to be perfect. So either have someone in place to make sure the inventory is getting ordered and paid for and and delivered in the timely manner. Because if you take your eyes off that, even for a couple of weeks and you don't get an order in on time and a manufacturer runs late, That can be very detrimental to not only the velocity and the momentum on Amazon, but overall your bottom line. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that 100%. So putting yourself in the shoes of a buyer, why do you think this is a business worth buying? I think it's an evergreen niche. I mean, I don't think I know it's an evergreen niche. It's just something that people are always buying. There's always a demand. It's a very huge space in, in the multiple billions of dollars every single year, both men and women. It's also global, which is a big appeal as well. There's a lot of room to be creative in this business and the ability to add other kind of brands or other items in the personal care space is very, very easy, adaptable, and easy to cross market to other people. So I think if there's someone out there who has that skill set, drive, or team, to put together a company or organization to take this to the proverbial next level. It's in a very good spot and has a lot of IP. It's got a lot of background information out there, a lot of footprints online that can be done very easily compared to other brands out there. Okay. Regarding the sale of this business, would you commit to an on-compete? Absolutely. And how much support are you willing to offer buyers? Are you going for the standard 30 days of email and Skype support? Yeah, I can do that and I can do above and beyond as well. To me, there's a lot of moving parts with the business as far as multiple manufacturers being involved, the fact that it sells on a couple of different platforms being e-commerce and Amazon, and there are a lot of different niche products inside the actual overall space. So there's definitely a lot of things to get your arms wrapped around and understand as it grows and questions will come up. So I have no problem supporting it past the month, of course. Okay, excellent. Are you open to negotiating something like an earnout? Yeah. I mean, I encourage everyone to bring their best offers and, you know, anything that seems to make sense with a a good party on the other end that I truly believe in, I would definitely entertain that. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to share that I might have missed? No, it's always a great experience with you guys. And I look forward to uh, another successful transaction. I appreciate it. 
Excellent. Great to hear. Well, thank you very much for your time, Timothy. It's been great talking to you. You as well. Thanks for the time. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. To learn more and see if this listing has already been sold, head over to empireflippers.com forward slash marketplace and search for listing 49133. If you're watching this on YouTube, click the link in the description to go straight to the listing. Once you've unlocked this listing, you'll be given everything you need to know about this business. So until next time, enjoy your digital journey.